uh, I think so watching again so now we have the uh, RX100 series booth here we have uh, the newest Mark 6 Mark 5 Mark 4 Mark 3 so uh, I kind of uh, have the thing set up so now we are here and we're testing the, um, the system frequency section from PAL to NTSC I'm going to show you so this is Mark 5 let's change to NTSC let's change to NTSC and we're going to see if it starts here so we're going to wait so now we see uh, this next screen uh, you know so this is um, the only instance of um, running on NTSC next screen on a PAL D40 camera so right after you have changed the uh, system frequency from PAL to NTSC so you see Mark 4 is right there but I'm going to test it later so hard press and it's gone so now we're going to switch it off so now these uh, PAL D4 cameras are now in NTSC uh, frame rates and I will turn these back on again and as you can see there's no more instance of uh, uh, system next screen but uh, it's not the case with the Mark 4 and I'm going to show later so so the Mark the RX100 Mark 5 and Mark 6 would have uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, I would say a slightly diminished uh, system neck screen uh, phenomenon, but still the neck screen exists. It only occurs when you change, uh, and, you know, uh, you switch the, the camera's uh, defaulted system frequency to the other one. So, so if you have an NTSC default camera and you want to switch to a uh, PAL, the same thing is going to occur except that the neck screen will be running on PAL at just one instance only. So. Now, the other thing that I want to show, just to confirm the fears of uh, some people who are actually looking for uh, uh, features, who are actually expecting the, the battery to occur, but that is not happening. So, uh, okay. So, all right. So, I'm switching to AVCHD. AVCHD, and as you can see, um, the AVCHD recording modes on uh, both the RX100 Mark 5 and the new Mark 6 have been deprecated and reduced to just two in play settings. So there are no more uh, progressive settings, no more 50p or 60p. Um, uh, uh, with uh, 28 Mbps, which is the best that you can get with AVC HD Progressive Standard, and uh, I'm a little bit concerned. So, because AVC HD Progressive is the uh, the latest, uh, the up most updated standard, I think it's 2.0 AVC HD Turbo 2.0 or something like that. So, AVC HD Progressive would be uh, uh, the newest. So. So let's not talk about uh, a 4K ultra high def, uh, full high def, so uh, 1080 mode. So, so without the uh, the uh, you know the uh, the 28 Mbps mode, it's going to be ugly. So, but do you understand that Sony is also um, um, uh, you know, advocating its own AVC, uh, XAVCS codec, and as you switch to XAVCS codec, high def, again, you can see all these modes, all these. So, same thing. But then, of course, you know, it's just a Sony thing. You go to Panasonic. Uh, that's not not going to be an XAVC. So, but um, Panasonic has its own uh, play with the MP4 recording modes, and I'm going to show you in uh, a separate clip on what it can do and what it cannot. So uh, let's forget the Panasonic one. Let's focus back on the Sony. So that's a problem, and uh, I've been told that um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, you know, the most current 4 series of the uh, RX100 series camera would be on sale, still available on sale. So, Mark 6 is the newest one, 
with a delicate grip, which is still too short for uh, big hands, but it's better than nothing. And of course, it comes with a, uh, a zoom lens, 24 to 200, uh, uh, f 2.8 to 4.5. But I would say 4.5 at 200 mil is not good enough. If Sony can could improve that so that the uh, the uh, the tele size uh, uh, aperture would be f4 or even better, well probably no better than four. But I would say f4 would be standard. So maybe Mark 7, I don't know. But then of course the other thing is the um, the multi folding lens barrel. So Sony has been packing things a lot. So this is crazy. So it would be something like Pentax, you know, uh, back in the Asai Optical days when uh, uh, you know uh, the company tried to pack you know a high zoom ratio in those uh, film-based uh, uh, compact cameras. Used to be around 38 to 105, that was super, and then 38 to 115, 38 to 140. That was crazy, but now it's even crazier with uh, digital. This is one uh, one inch censored. Um, uh, 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 form so as opposed to the uh, the uh, previous Mark 5 with the 24 to 70 f2.8 and uh, it still has a lot of um, uh, uh, credit with the stances because some people find it slow now 204.5 that's quite slow and uh, so <coughs> so it really depends on the tape and needs actual needs so, but then of course it's in the older, slight older uh, version, so uh, the uh, hardware specifications are a little bit older. So we're going to wait till uh, Sony, uh, Sony uh, uh, unleashes or, or, or deploys the newer RX 500 Mark 5A, which uh, has been announced in both Japan and the US. So we're going to wait uh, till uh, the, uh, the uh, Mark 5A arrives, so we're going to take a look. So, so uh, I probably don't have time doing a further test, but I uh, understand that the uh, the manual GUI system has changed a little bit. Well, I would say small changes. I'll have to dig in really further. But uh, the purpose of this uh, video segment would be to um, to tell you folks of uh, the changing uh, uh, system frequency next screen on these uh, side shots. So. Alright, let's take a break and uh, in the next part I'm going to cover the Mark IV, which is just next to me, so stay tuned.